Fetal alcohol syndrome, or FAS, is the topic. And essentially what we're talking about is a situation that can occur during pregnancy. During pregnancy, you are not supposed to take things that are known as teratogens. And they include drugs, either prescription drugs or illicit street drugs. They include smoking. And they also include alcohol. And alcohol is what causes fetal alcohol syndrome. Now, the reason is because alcohol crosses the placenta. And in addition, it can cross the fetal blood brain barrier and when that happens it can cause toxicity in the fetus so obviously this is a very serious condition and therefore there is no safe level of alcohol during pregnancy so fetal alcohol syndrome essentially is a triad of three things that happen. The first is growth retardation or growth restriction. The next one is facial abnormalities and I will uh, go through some of these facial abnormalities um, in, a, in a minute or so. And the third one is CNS dysfunction and CNS dysfunction can also lead to intellectual disability. So keep this triad in mind. Now let's talk a little bit about some of the key things that will be discussed in clinical vignettes in terms of the uh, presentation. The first thing that they talk about is either prenatal or postnatal growth deficiency. So a child that is small for gestational age or uh, of short stature after birth. The next one is some sort of intellectual disability usually described as mental retardation on a clinical vignette. Behavioral disturbances are also part of the presentation and the next one is an important one congenital heart defects and there's one in particular VSD ventricular septal defect and then the last one are the atypical facial features and I'm gonna talk about a few of these because they appear a lot in the description of a, a child with fatal alcohol syndrome. So I'll talk about a few of these. The first abnormal or atypical facial appearance is something known as a short palpebral fissure. Now what that is, is essentially if you have um, a measurement of the person's eyes it's really the the width and in people with fetal alcohol syndrome it'll be shorter the next uh, one that is uh, characterized as a atypical facial uh, feature is something known as epicanthal folds and it's a very difficult to draw that so I'll just describe it it's basically a skin fold of the upper eyelid that covers the inner angle of the eye and I encourage you to look up pictures of these to get an understanding of what an epicanthal fold actually looks like. The next one is a thin upper lip. So if normal lips are like this the thin upper lip would be kind of like that. The next one is something known as smooth philtrum. The philtrum is essentially a groove that uh, exists between our um, nose and the lip and that will be essentially flat and smooth 
in a person with fetal alcohol syndrome. It essentially won't be there. There's another one that they describe on clinical vignettes. It's microcephaly, and that just means small brain. In terms of treatment, really, you, the main emphasis is intervention before fetal alcohol syndrome happens, because once it happens, there's no actual cure. So you have to make sure that you counsel the patient properly during the pregnancy to let her know that no safe level of alcohol consumption exists. Now let's take a look at a few vignettes. A three-year-old recently adopted boy is brought to the office for the first time by his new parents for a checkup. They say that he seems to be adjusting to his new family pretty well, but that he is a bit slower than other children, and he has poor social skills. He is able to walk unassisted, however he cannot walk up steps, even though his previous home had steps, and he is only able to say a few words. They are concerned because he looks a little different from other kids who have started to make mean comments to him. Physical exam shows microcephaly, epicanthal eye folds, small teeth, poorly formed concha, and a holocystic murmur. This condition could most likely be prevented by all well, the describing a child that has fetal alcohol syndrome, and it could be prevented with avoidance of alcohol during the pregnancy. Next question. 28 year old Gravita 3 parent 2 woman comes to the clinic for a prenatal care at 11 weeks gestation. Her medical and surgical history are unremarkable, although she relates to a social history significant for alcohol consumption. She drinks one to two glasses of wine with lunch and three to four glasses of wine with and after dinner on most nights. Given her history, her fetus is at greatest risk for. Well, remember the three things are growth, growth restriction, number two is facial abnormalities, and number three is uh, CNS dysfunction with um, intellectual disability. Now, interestingly, none of those are mentioned here. So you have to go further into some of the most common possibilities in terms of uh, complications. And one of them is a VSD, ventral septal defect, and that falls under the category of cardiac defects. So B is the answer. And finally, in reference to the patient above, when reviewing her social history, she states that she consumes two to three drinks, but only when she goes out with her girlfriends after work. Lately, she says that she has been going out every night, but since her positive pregnancy test six weeks ago, she has cut down her consumption to one drink per day. You counsel the patient that there is no safe level of alcohol use in pregnancy, and the safest level is complete abstinence. In addition, you notify her that she is at an increased risk for giving birth to a child with. Well. Growth restriction, facial abnormalities, and CNS dysfunction are the three things part of the triad of FAS. And fortunately, one of those is here, and that's growth restriction.